Welcome A squared I students. This is Mr. Sierra from Pilot High School. I'm going to go over lesson 22-3 from the springboard. Now in the previous two lessons, you've been doing things with right triangles. And the previous lesson, right before this, you've learned about your trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to apply those trig ratios to right triangles so you can solve problems. Uh, you can find unknown side lengths in right triangles and you can solve real world problems using trigonometric ratios. So let's do a quick warm up, just a quick practice over right triangles, make sure you know how to do this. So in the triangles below, the four triangles that you see there, if you could find the measure of one of the acute angles given the other acute angle, find the measure of the second acute angle. So go ahead and press pause, take a minute or so and find the uh, missing angle in these triangles. Okay, hopefully you are able to find these angles real quick. I'll go ahead and just put the answers right there. Again, two ways you can either say all three angles have to add up to 180. So you're gonna do 180 minus 90 minus 32 for the, for example, on the blue one there. This gives you 58 degrees. Or you can say, well, since one angle is 90 and the other two must equal a 90, you could always do 90 minus one of the acute angles. For example, the red one, I do 90 minus 45, it gives me 45. All right, so let's get into it. So what we're going to do is kind of take this step by step um, in, this, in this program. So for number one, for each of the following triangles, determine the ratios requested, then use the scientific graphing calculator to evaluate each trigonometric ratio function to the nearest tenth, to the nearest thousandth, and solve each equation for y, and round your answers to the nearest tenth. Okay, so if you want to take a Press pause real quick, take a minute, see if you can do these on your own. Then I will go over it. Okay, hopefully you tried this on your own. So you can see that sine of 41 degrees, okay? So it says, determine the ratio requested. So what is sine of 41 degrees? So if I wanna write the ratio of sine of 41 degrees, Well, sine is the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, the opposite side, opposite over hypotenuse, excuse me. So in this case, the opposite side is y. So that's my opposite here. So that is y over the hypotenuse, which is 100. That's my hypotenuse. So that is the ratio that they're looking for. Then it asks you to evaluate each trigonometric function to the nearest 10 thousandths. So then what they want is go ahead and plug this in your calculator, sine of 41 degrees. Now, if you don't know, you haven't already been told, your calculators, even your little uh, calculator on your iPhone or on your uh, Android your cell phone, if you turn it sideways, it does have those trig ratios. Just make sure that you are in degrees. Make sure you are in degrees. Okay, there's a button that says, DEG for degrees, or if you press it, then you will see an RAD for radians. So if you just press um, 41 and then sign, you should get 0 0.656. Therefore, if you were to plug it in here, 0 0.656 equals Y over 100. I multiply both sides by 100. And I get that y is equal to 65.6 degrees, 65.6 degrees, 65.6, excuse me. Looking at letter B, same thing. They ask you for a cosine of 28 degrees. So what is the cosine of 28 degrees? That trig ratio is going to be cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm looking at this angle here. So the adjacent side is this one here. So which is going to be 18 over the hypotenuse. Again, why is my hypotenuse this time? Okay, so that is my trig ratio that they're looking for. Now, how would I solve for y? Well, first, they ask you to find the value of sine of 28 degrees. So plug it into your cell phone. You should get that the 
value is 0 0.883 and plug it in plugging that back into the equation here 0 0.883 equals 18 over y in this case two steps here multiply both sides by y and then i'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.833 Let's do a new line here. So 0 0.883 y equals 18. So I'm going to divide both sides of that by 0 0.883. And you should get that the value of y will give you um, 20.4 right into the nearest 10. Let's look at the next one here. As I said, they're gonna kind of walk you through this step-by-step step here. It says, use your knowledge of the trigonometric functions to find the value of X in triangle ABC. So if I wanna find a missing side in a triangle, first thing I wanna do is identify what we know, okay? So they give us one of the angles here. Okay, so choose an acute angle. So I'm just gonna use the angle that they already give us. Yeah, I'm gonna choose this acute angle here. And move this over a little bit, oops. So I'm gonna choose that 20 degree angle. So I'm gonna choose, which is, if you can see there, it is angle C, okay? So I'm gonna choose angle C, because that's the one they give it to. So now if I wanted to, I could have chosen angle A, and found that that is 70 degrees. I could have used that if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna use the one they give us. The next thing to do is identify the sides as opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse with respect to the acute angle chosen. So if I'm looking at angle C, the opposite side is that one there. So I'm gonna label this as opposite. The hypotenuse is always the same. Hypotenuse is the op side opposite my 90 degree angle. Here and my adjacent side is the side closest. Side closest is that side here to my acute angle. All right. So I identified the three sides. Now I'm going to use the sides to choose an appropriate trigonometric function. So how do we determine that? Well, if you're looking at this problem here, notice the adjacent side is neither the side that I'm looking for nor side that's given so i'm not going to use adjacent at all i get rid of that so the two sides that are left are opposite and hypotenuse if you remember it is the sine trig ratio that uses opposite and hypotenuse so i'm going to use the sine ratio okay so now we're going to write an equation using the identified sides acute angle and trigonometric function chosen okay so i'm going to say that sine of 20 degrees equals oops, equals the opposite, which in this case is x, over the hypotenuse 15. And then we're just going to solve for x. So the first step here, multiply both sides by 15. Actually, it's the one step here. After I multiply both sides here by 15, oops, 15's cancel out left with x. So I get that x is going to equal to 5.13. So 15 times sine of 20 degrees is 5.13. Looking at the next one here. It says, use your knowledge of trigonometric functions to find the value of y in the triangle below. So again, first step is to choose an acute angle in the triangle and identify the sides as adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse with respect to the angle. So again, I'm gonna use the angle that is given here, okay? I'm gonna use angle F, which is 10 degrees. So that's the one that's given. So it's the easiest one to use. Now from this 10 degrees, I like to, well, identify the sides so we know that of course opposite my 90 degree angle 
So opposite that one, that's going to be my hypotenuse. That's going to be my hypotenuse. Sorry. Okay. And then opposite this 10 degrees here. That's going to be my opposite side. And then the one that's missing here, the side that's next to it, that's going to be my adjacent side. Part B says use the size to choose an appropriate trig ratio and write an equation using the identified sides, acute angle, and trigonometric function, then solve for y. So in this case, again, look at what I have and look at what I'm looking for. The opposite has neither a side that I'm looking for, or it's not given a measurement. So I'm going to get rid of this opposite side here. So the two sides that are left with are adjacent and hypotenuse. And it's the cosine that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to use cosine of 10 degrees. Cosine of 10 degrees equals adjacent. 12 over hypotenuse y. First thing I do is I'm going to solve both sides for, I'm going to solve for y, so I multiply both sides by y. By the way, you could have also written this as a proportion. I'll show you here in a second. You want to solve it that way. So my y's cancel out, so I'm left with, go to the next side, y is equal to y of cosine 10 degrees equals 12. I'm going to divide both sides by y. Again, my y's cancel out, just like they canceled out there. And I get that y is equal to 12.2. If I do 12, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Divide both sides by cosine of 10. I don't know what I was doing there. Divide both sides by cosine of 10. Oops. Sorry, I had a little brain fart there. Cosine of 10 degrees. And I get that y is equal to 12.2 because the cosines here will cancel out and you're just left with y. So 12 divided by cosine of 10 degrees. Now, if you wanted to, you could always write these as a proportion. For example, this one here, this cosine of 10 equals 12 over y. I could have wrote this as a proportion by making this over 1. And you know how to solve a proportion, right? You can cross multiply and solve. That's another way to do it if you'd like. Just cross multiply and solve. You get the same answer regardless. All right, so let's get to one of these application problems. So Tricia did an exceptional job creating logos that she was given the task of making a banner and representing her company at a job fair. When Tricia got, got to the job fair, she was relieved to see there was a ladder she could use to hang the banner. While Tricia waited for someone to help her, she leaned the 12-foot ladder against the wall behind the booth. The ladder made a 75-degree angle with the floor. So first thing we want to do is use the information above to draw and label a right triangle to illustrate the relationship. So let's make a little picture here. So if we have a ladder here, all right, lean against a wall right here. So that's my wall. Okay, it's, it's a terrible wall. Let's see if we can write that a little better. Okay, and you can see from that picture we can come up with a right triangle because you know that we have the bottom here. That's the ground, right? We come up with a right triangle. My right triangle is going to look like this. Okay, and label the parts. Now we know this part here, the 12 foot. That's the ladder, right? That's the ladder.
this part here, that's the wall. All right, so we have our picture there, right triangle illustrated, showing all the parts. Now it's set up in solving equation to find how far up the wall the top of the ladder reaches. So that's gonna be my X, how far up the wall. So if I wanna write that, okay, so what do I do? Notice I'm given the 75 degrees, that's my acute angle. So the wall from 75 degrees, that's gonna be the opposite side, right? That's the opposite. And the ladder is my hypotenuse. So I'm gonna say that the sine of 75 degrees equals opposite x over hypotenuse 12. Okay. In this case, you had multiplied both sides by 12. to solve, or again, you can write a proportion and cross multiply. All right, so we get that X is equal to, so 12 times times sine of 75 degrees equals X. And we get that x we get that x is equal to um, 11.6 now from letter c that says find the distance from the base of the wall to the ladder using two different methods so that's my y here so using two different methods okay i'm gonna use a different color here So my first method would be to use Pythagorean, uh, to use the uh, trig, trig ratios. And get this out the way here real quick. There we go. So using my trig ratios, so the Y is adjacent adjacent to my 75 degrees. So I'm going to say that cosine of, just doesn't want to work here. Give me a second here. So that cosine of uh, 75 degrees is the opposite, I mean the adjacent, excuse me, which is y over the hypotenuse, 12. Okay, so I go ahead and cross and uh, I can set the proportion, solve for y, and I get that y is going to equal to 3.5. Get this moved up or get this out the way. 3.1, excuse me. The other way to do this would be to use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Because I already have one of the sides. All right, a squared plus b squared. equals c squared okay where a we're given as you know 11.6 the hypotenuse is 12 a squared is 11.6 and let's let's say b is my y and just solve for y as before, like you've done Pythagorean theorem in the past, and you get the same thing, 3.1.
So as kind of a couple practice problems here, if you could go ahead and do five and six, go ahead and pause it here, try numbers five and six, see if you can do those on your own. And then I will go over them. So go ahead and press pause. All right, hopefully you've tried this one. And go ahead and do it here. So explain how to find the length of the hypotenuse of triangle DEF without using the Pythagorean theorem. So again, I'm going to use my trig ratios. So if I notice my acute angle here is going to be my 25 degrees. H is my hypotenuse, so that's why that's you know, your hypotenuse. 16 in this case is my adjacent side. It's my adjacent side. So because I'm using adjacent hypotenuse, I'm going to use cosine. So I say cosine of 25 degrees equals 16 over H. Okay. Now, again, if I want to, it may be easiest to go ahead and set this up like a proportion, right? Cross, multiply, and solve. Or if you solve it the other way, you'd end up doing uh, you know, multiplying each side by h and then divide by cosine 25. So you get eventually h is equal to 16 over cosine of 25 degrees. What you get the hypotenuse is going to be 17.65 as your hypotenuse. Number six, if you haven't done it, press pause and try it. All right, so in this case, it says that Joe says she can find the equation uses sine of 40 equals BC over 62. <clears throat> Liam says he can find BC using the equation cosine equals 50 equals BC over 62. Who is correct? Well, in this case, they are both correct. They are both correct. And the reason that is is because that sine of 40 degrees is the same thing sine of 40 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 50 degrees. They're the same thing. We learned that in the last unit, all right? So you could have used the opposite, 40 degrees is opposite over 62, or I could have used the other acute angle, which was 50 degrees, an angle at B, said that uh, cosine of 50 degrees equals adjacent over 62, BC over 62. Those were a couple of practice problems. So here's the practice section. Go ahead and press pause and try numbers six, seven, eight, and nine. Go ahead and try seven, eight, and nine. Okay, hopefully we're back. You tried those problems, or at least seven, to get the answers here. So to find X, again, what am I looking for? To find X, from this 18 degrees, I'm going to use the angle given. X is the X is the adjacent. Y is the opposite. So to find X, I'm going to say that the cosine, because that's what uses adjacent hypotenuse, cosine of 18 degrees is adjacent X over 25. You can solve for that one, right? Multiply both sides by 25. So do 25 times cosine of 18, you get 23.78. To find y, I'm going to use the sine opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say sine of 18 degrees equals opposite y over hypotenuse. Okay, so in this case, again, I multiply 25 times sine of 18, and you get 7.73. Letter B. To find letter B. Again, identifies from 72 degrees, X is my opposite. Y is the hypotenuse. 
and 8.5 is my adjacent. So if I label the parts here, okay, so if I'm looking for X, then I'm going to use the opposite and the adjacent, right? So which one uses opposite and adjacent? It would be uh, tangent. So tangent of 72 degrees equals opposite x over 8.5 over adjacent. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8.5 to find x. I think x is 26.16. Then to find y, well, y is the hypotenuse. So if I use adjacent and hypotenuse, now there's more than one way to do this. This is just one, one ratio I use. To find the hypotenuse here, I'd say cosine, because that's the adjacent, of 72 degrees equals adjacent, 8.5, over hypotenuse, which is y. Again, you can set up a portion or multiply both sides by y and then divide both sides by cosine of 72. Not going to go over the algebra there. Oops, sorry. Don't know what happened there. Let's go back there. That y is 27.51. And lastly, the last problem here. Again, I label my parts. In this case here, 34 is the uh, 34 is the Opposite. Get back to green here. So I'm going to say this is opposite. This is hypotenuse. Y is hypotenuse across from 90. And the X is adjacent. Okay, to find x, notice I'm going to use adjacent and hypotenuse. So that's going to be cosine. So I say cosine of 45 degrees equals, oh, excuse me, uh, I got to use opposite and adjacent because I have to know one of the sides there. Let's go back a little bit. So if I use cosine there, I have x and y, so I can only have one unknown. So I'm going to use opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to say tangent of 45 degrees equals opposite, which is 34, over x, opposite over adjacent. All right, so I go ahead and I solve those. I solve that for x, I get x is 34. And then to find y, y is hypotenuse, and I can use opposite, so that's sine. So I can say sine of 45 degrees equals opposite 34 over hypotenuse, which is y. So both sides, multiply both sides by y, then divide by sine of 45. That's just the algebra there. And I'm going to get that y equals 48.08. Next one here. Two more problems to go to find the perimeter. So to find the perimeter, I must know all three sides. So essentially, I'm looking for, I need to find this side here, right? I need to find this side here. I need to find these two sides here, find x, I need to find y, right? So I'm given this angle here, and I'm given the hypotenuse. So if I want to, find x, for example, I can say that the sine of 22 degrees is 
sine of 22 degrees. So the sine of 22 degrees equals opposite, which is x, over, sorry, my pen started failing on me, opposite over hypotenuse, which is 15. So opposite over hypotenuse. So if I solve this for x, I get that x here be 5.6. And to find y, I'm going to use sine. I'm going to say sine of 22 degrees equals y over 15. y over 15, solve for y, and I get the y, this side here is 13.9. So once I know those sides are 13.9, I can easily find the perimeter, add three sides, add all three sides, 5.6, 13.9, and 15, I get 34.5. And to find the area, it's one half of the length and the uh, one, one half of base time site, sorry, I put the wrong one there. Base times height. So I get the base and the height are 5.6 and 13.9. One half times that is 38.9 feet squared. Finally, number nine. Number nine is the one that takes the, a lot of what you learned in the previous unit, unit two for rhombus, to find the answer. So you have the, it tells you here the longer diagonal of a rhombus longer diagonal of a rhombus measures 20 centimeters. The rhombus has an angle measure that measures 100 degrees. So determine the perimeter of the rhombus to the nearest tenth. Explain how you found your answer. Okay. So first of all, let's draw what we have. So I draw a rhombus there. I know that the longer diagonal is 20 centimeters. It says that has an angle that measures 100. So which angle is it? This was it this one here or is it this one here? Well, it's got to be the bigger one. Right, so it goes with the uh, shorter diagonal. So that angle goes here. Now, I still have to figure out, in order to find the perimeter of the rhombus, I need to figure out what this size is gonna be. If you remember your properties of a, uh, a parallelogram and a rhombus, you'll notice that, remember that the diagonals bisect each other, and in a romp for all parallelograms, and the rhombus, the diagonals are also perpendicular, right? So that's where I get this from. Since the diagonals bisect each other, that diagonal of 20 becomes two sections of 10. Another property from a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect the vertex angle. So what was 100 degrees here, what was 100 degrees gets split up into 250 degrees. And why do we want that? Because what we're going to do here is now we're going to take this. Remember, since this is a, the diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus, I'm going to take this part here. All right? I'm going to take this part here. And I'm going to make a right triangle from it. I'm going to make a right triangle from it. So that gives me this here okay so that's this one of these sections one of these four sections here becomes that now again to find the perimeter i need to find this red section there that red section okay from this 50 degrees that red section here is the hypotenuse the blue the 10 centimeters here that's the opposite so i label the parts here 
Okay. So here's what I have. This is the opposite. Centimeters. So I'm going to write an equation here. So I'm going to use the sine because that uses opposite and hypotenuse. Okay. So I'm going to say that sine of 50 degrees is going to equal to, in this case, 10 over the hypotenuse, which is x. Ten over x. If I were to solve for x, multiply both sides by x, then divide by sine of fifty, I get that x is thirteen point one. Once I know that this side here is thirteen point one, the perimeter. Remember the rhombus; all sides are equal. So four times thirteen point one equals fifty two point four. Any questions there? Hopefully there are no questions. If you need to, uh, you can always jump on to one of the tutorial sessions. I have tutorials. The uh, morning Zoom, um, while the live lessons are being taught, you can uh, ask me questions over any of these to explain any of these again if you need to. If not, then hopefully you will do be able to do the homework problems and we'll do well on the next one.